respond to the cloud. Okay, we are recording. So welcome everyone and thank you for joining the Open Life Science Q&A webinar for OLS2, our second cohort. So we will be recording this call and um, uploading it to YouTube later so that people can uh, catch up. And one thing I think we'd request, you're absolutely welcome to ask questions as we're going, but uh, on the way, if you could just keep your microphone muted to prevent background noise and then just unmute it when you wish to ask questions. Um, so first of all, um, before we start every call, we like to have a quick reminder, Open Life Science has a code of conduct that generally means that we want everyone to treat each other with respect and to treat each other the way that you would like to be treated yourself. And we say this not expre expressly because we've noticed any issues, but more because we want this to be a safe space where everyone feels that they can contribute equally and that they feel safe. So if at any point you experience or witness something that you think isn't in, in line with our code of conduct, which is in uh, the agenda at the top of the second page, then um, please report that to team at openlifesci.org. The email address is at the top of the page as well. Or if it's something that I myself have done or one of the founders, um, which is myself, uh, Yo Yehudi, Malvika, who's on the call, um, or Berenice, then you can email us directly so that you, have, you cut out the person from the loop that you uh, need to make the report about. But hopefully there's no problems there and hopefully we'll have a great call. So um, I've mentioned the muting. And yes, if you want to ask questions, you can please ask them either in the chat or in the Google Doc or um, it's also okay to unmute as well to ask these questions. And we will try and make notes about these questions because people may want to know about them later on as well. And I think that's all from the intro for me. So I'll pass it over to Malvika. Thank you, Yo. Welcome to Domen Domenica. Domenica, I'm so sorry. I'm going Hello. to share my uh, slide, but Domenica, we're going to start talking about the program and I'm sharing the document with you where you can see where we are at. Thank you so much. Um, Yo, can you give me the power to share my screen, please? Yes. <laughs> but I, I have to do something here? No. No, you, you're fine. You can uh, go ahead and add your name if that's okay for you. But I'll go on. And this is what we're going to talk about. So first of all, thank you for showing up. We are very excited that you would like to learn more about the program because we like to talk a lot more about the program. Uh, that's us. Uh, Berenice is not on the call because she has a mother duty right now. And Yo is on the call and me. Uh, we started working on this project a year ago where we uh, launched our program within the Mozilla Open Leadership. All of us, the one thing that has in common that we believe that science can advance only and only when people share their work with others and not compete. Specifically uh, in 2012, a study showed that 160 tech company found that the level of their strategic intent in openness and not actual openness alone correlates with effective market performance. Uh, this is to show that this is that, that what we are talking about is to bring people together, share knowledge that they are creating with each other, can bring a real positive outcome in their work. Open Life Science Program help early career researchers and potential academic leaders and anybody in the equivalent position in becoming Open Science Ambassador. In the past, we've also had people who are leading their group. So this is definitely not limited to early career researcher. Anybody is welcome who has an intent to learn more about open science practices. So throughout the program, what we try to do, we try to together explore the important concepts and practices in open science. Uh, why I'm saying together is that neither you, me, or Bernice are experts uh, of everything. And I believe that nobody can ever be expert of open science. And therefore we bring in uh, over 30 mentors and 50 experts from their expertise domain and, and discuss what are the best practices, what are the guidance and recommendations that ex exist that we can apply them in our work one step at a time. 
uh, a lot of time when we lack examples and even model uh, role models who can inspire us to do these kind of work is quite challenging. And therefore we try to involve as many perspectives as possible. So what is open life science? It's a 15 week long personal mentorship and cohort based training, which ends with a graduation. So we have a, every week, there is something. There is one week where we would have cohort based training over an online call. And the week afterwards, you would meet your mentor in, an, in a one on one guidance based discussion. And then you would have also your chance to do hands-on practice because everything that we teach comes with an assignment. These assignments make you think about what these topic means to you. And we are also providing ways for people to discuss all these assignments with other cohort member and explore how other people are practicing these. So of course we realize that open science means different thing and open science practices across different communities happen differently. So all of you might come with completely different ideas and that's okay. We don't have one single uh, focus in open science. So you can think about storing your data, which is about open data. You can think about developing source code openly, which is open source software. You can involve others in designing your hardware, which is open source hardware then compiling your methods or protocol, sharing results, results early on, reviewing papers, sharing knowledge by training and education, collaborating with people openly, and actually inviting them into your work, supporting and connecting your field with others, and actually bringing people together where you exist, and then welcome con welcoming contributors in maintaining, uh, in welcoming contributors and maintainers in building a community. So I have all these words, which is storing, developing, crowdsourcing, reviewing, sharing, collaborating. These are actions. And therefore the actions cannot happen passively. You have to learn and you have to practice and you have to make conscious effort towards uh, realizing your open science projects. So what we want to ensure from the beginning in our work is that everything thing that we do is open by design because it cannot be a thoughtless default. It cannot be an afterthought either. You have to think about how you are welcoming people into your work, how you're connecting them, how you're sharing your knowledge so everybody can reuse or build upon, and how you're empowering each other for participation and inclusion. So with the OLS mentoring and training, our mentees will lead their project openly, share their work effectively, and bring a positive culture change to, to their communities. So the next step in OLS, uh, at the moment we have our, so today we have pre-application seminar and our uh, call for application is open, which is closing on 30th of June. Uh, we will be announcing in July who our applicants are and who are our OLS2 cohort. And then we will kick off our program in September that will go on until December uh, being a 16 week program. At this point, I'll give it to Gail so she can take you to a journey of what you will learn. Okay, thank you very much, Malpika. So um, I'm actually not gonna share my slides. I'm just gonna talk at the screen for a bit, but I'm just gonna shuffle my windows slightly so it looks like I'm looking at you and not off to the side. And dun, dun, dun. Okay, right. Uh, so um, like Malpika mentioned, OLS is actually a 16 week uh, program in which we go over a large number of different topics. So I'll talk a bit about what we do in each of the weeks. Um, so what we actually do is we start out with a mentor-mentee call. So you, you're assigned an individual mentor, there's someone who can guide you through what you're doing. They sometimes will just act as a sounding board and a third party who is you know, standing outside of your work and can help you see things. Other times they may want to suggest certain aspects of uh, inclusivity with relations to your work or road mapping or help you prioritize. Um, and we try and skill match the mentors with you so that when your mentors um, are working with you that you have things in common and so that you can relate to one another. And so then that it tends to be the very first week of your program. You get to meet them, you get to learn a bit about each other and agree uh, and establish a working pattern. 
the second week is uh, another exciting week because you actually get to meet the full cohort of the people that you're going to be working with uh, th throughout the through the program over the next 16 weeks. So this just tends to be um, a, a bit of a welcome call where everyone says, hey, here's, here's who I am, here's what my project is. But we also introduce some of the starting concepts of working openly. And one of them I think is actually kind of exciting is, is called the Open Canvas. And it just sets out some of the project vision that you have for the next n weeks or maybe even longer. And at the start of the program, I know it, sometimes it feels a bit like this sort of administrative detail or this silly form you're filling out. But towards the end, I think, for example, through um, our first cohort, almost every single final presentation we had, people reflected back on the open canvas and said, so here's what I said I was going to do at the start. And maybe it was like, this was really helpful or other times and here's why it changed. And so it tends to be a really nice exercise that helps you basically just plan what you're doing and then reflect on it later. So every other week is a um, mentor call. So the first week you have the mentor call, then we have the cohort call and then it's another mentor call. Uh, so I will skip the mentor calls for the rest of the points. Otherwise I'm just going to say, and there's another mentor call. <laughs> so moving on. Um, so that was week two, the first cohort call. Week four, we actually start teaching about GitHub. And we teach this even if you don't write code. And the reason for this is that GitHub is a lot more than a coding platform. It's also a community platform. So it, with um, a, a little bit of teaching around Markdown, you are usually able to, within half an hour or so, set up your own website and you can comment and discuss issues on GitHub. And then if something's resolved, you close it. You can uh, welcome contributors and it works as a very good community platform, uh, as well as actually giving you a website by the end of learning how to work with um, GitHub. We also talk about creating a project roadmap so that you can set your goals out for yourself. But more importantly, it's on the web which means that other people can see it and contribute it, uh, contribute or um, ask you questions. And basically it's the, the beginnings of involving people with what you're going to be doing in the future. Moving on to the next cohort call. Um, this is where we start a set of open science modules. So the previous module was more about community with a bit of tech mixed in. Open science, we start looking at really specific open science related uh, aspects. So open source software. We get, we, last time we actually had someone from the open source initiative talking about uh, open source software and licensing. We talk more about hardware. So if you work, let's say in biology, you might know that machines in, in your department cost hundreds of thousands of dollars or euros or pounds or whatever currency you may use. And that means that buying a new one is really prohibitive. If it breaks, it's going to be so expensive. Open hardware actually gives you a chance to, um, to, to, to have high quality machines and equipment actually at a relatively low cost. And they're open, which means when it breaks, you can probably fix it yourself. And then we talk about other aspects like open data. And so responsibly sharing data that you may be creating. Uh, so, for example, if I have um, information about a genome, so long as it's not a personal genome and personal data, more people can benefit from it if we share it openly. Um, our second open science module in the, in the next cohort call, we actually talk about disseminating your work. So what's the previous cohort call? We talked a lot about different types or different aspects of science that there may be that can be open. This time we're talking about now that you've done your science or while you're doing your science, you can actually share these results openly. So early publication, like Melvika Mel Mel mentioned with preprints. Um, then there are things like openly sharing your protocols or openly sharing education and training around what you're doing uh, and getting DOIs for your work, sometimes in non-traditional ways. So ways to claim credit for things that you've shared openly, even if it's not a publication, for example. In week 10, Open Science 3, this is a new module that we're still developing at the moment, but we're thinking this will be more towards open science in an advanced way. So this is addressing things like FAIR, for example, making your research findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And then week 12, after having gone through at this point, 
three months of quite uh, busy work. So whilst the cohort calls are actually only um, like an hour and a half a week and then mentoring about half an hour, it tends, it tends to be, we pack a lot in and you, there's a lot to think about and a lot to apply to your projects. So in week 12, we start talking a bit about things like self-care and mental health. Um, and because if you're, you're leading an open project, there's a good chance that you are actually really excited about this and potentially at risk of working too hard. And so we want to make sure that everyone's looking after themselves because you can't really look after the community that you're building unless you also are in a good place. And we also talk about ally skills, which extends to helping out others if you're in a position of power, uh, recognizing what your power is and then making sure that it's a safe space for others. We also have a bit of uh, career guidance. So we tend to invite a few different experts from different areas around the domain. And we ask them to share, share their path, share their goals, share what they've done and how they got there. And sometimes they, you know, maybe how they've messed up even because it's really nice to know that the path is not actually nearly as easy upwards as you think it might be. Um, and then week 14, I think is our final cohort call. This is one where we talk about designing and empowering for inclusivity. Um, this talks about making sure that we have good paths for people to join in your community. And so, for example, someone might start by making a small contribution and then you, you, you can design a whole pathway that allows people to bring, bring them in further. So after you've done your first contribution, how can you contribute in a larger way? Eventually you might step up and become part of the project leadership even. And if you design those pathways consciously, then it makes it much easier for people to actually come in and be involved. Um, and perhaps more importantly, we also talk about um, inclusivity in the form of making sure that we're allowing everyone to feel included. So that doesn't mean just people who talk like you or speak like you or live near you, but um, people from all walks of life, whether that be gender differences, whether that be race, whether that be sexuality or other aspects of um, diversity in general. Um, and after that, that is our final call where we're actually delivering talks and information from our experts and our guest speakers and from ourselves. And this is a point where it has now been three and a half months. We're, we're at week, week 16. We start practicing to talk about what we've learned. So this has been an amazing and exciting journey. So everyone wraps up with a, um, with a presentation. So we have a rehearsal, we practice a bit what we're doing when we share everything with everyone else about the projects that you've been learning. And then we uh, have a live streamed presentation that is open to the world. So you can actually catch the ones from OLS1 if you want to see some of the other projects that people have been working on. If you go to YouTube um, and look at the Open LifeSci channel, then all of our presentations are online. They were live streamed. I think one of my proudest moments was finding out that one of our graduates her mother hadn't been able to make it to her PhD graduation or to her wedding, but she made it to her OLS graduation. And I think my heart just about exploded when I found that out because we'd live streamed it. Um, so I think that's all of the like a whirlwind seven minute journey through what's actually a 16 week journey. Um, Avika, did you have anything to add on that side? Uh, no, you, but we got a question related to the mentor on the chat that says, uh, where, are the men where are the mentors being sourced from? Uh, the first cohort or the places as well? Uh, yeah, thanks. I had my chat slightly scrolled down, so I didn't actually spot that. So thank you for pointing it out. Uh, so mentors are sourced from both of those places. Uh, so for our very first cohorts, we didn't have a previous cohort to recruit from. So it was primarily from amongst our network, from people who were already active in the open science space. Um, this time, uh, some of our graduates will also be participating as mentors, which I think is a crowning moment of pride for us. Yeah, I so there were a few examples that we can give from our previous cohort, what kind of project people had been working on, if you hadn't had the chance to look. Um, some of the projects were about establishing local communities where people can come and exchange their expertise. There were a lot which were online based communities. So for example, we had a couple of uh, projects in Kenya where people have uh, bioinformatics individuals, but not really strongly connected and with the platform that they are building, they want to have these uh, online 
webinars and online events to highlight people uh, who are actually doing really incredible jobs. And even there was one mentee who went on to connect musicians, folk musicians in Nepal, which was like, okay, we never thought Open Sans can do that. So I think we were surprised by what people could achieve. And uh, consistently, we had 18 projects that actually successfully completed. And one of the things that also came up is that it may look like that there's a lot of time commitment and it is true if you want to dedicate that much of time, but the biggest journey is to stick on and learn what we are teaching and try to apply what you can, but these lessons will stay with you like lifelong. Like they are applicable to a lot of projects. They are transferable from one project to other. So therefore, if you can't use all of them right now, in future, you will have a project where they are aptly situated to be a practice that you would need. So one thing to say that the success are very personal to people who are joining. There is no one ultimate goal that this program has. Cool. If anyone has uh, any questions, it's absolutely uh, okay at the moment. You can unmute your mic if you wish. We also have a space in the Google Doc if you'd like to type any questions. Oh, I have only one comment, not a question. I just received uh, in a short time this news about uh, the meeting today and Malbika sent an email to Celia uh, in Goblet. I am a member of the executive board of Goblet. And so I had a really short time to, I have not uh, had a look still of the application form and so on, but I, I like uh, the, the program and the idea like I see it. So uh, I joined it just to, to try to understand more about uh, this program. And um, I can also spread the news among the Embernet uh, network, that is a network of uh, bioinformaticians. And um, what, what, I, what I wonder is uh, 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 how this program uh, connect with, the, for example, the Research Data Alliance or with Elixir in some way, because in the last days, the, this week, just this week, there was a three days uh, uh, Elixir land. And uh, all the matters related to open science that are uh, fairness of data, that is a standardization uh, and uh, creation of ontologies for data, just for to make the, them open. And also many system for uh, bench, data benchmarking, for example, for uh, validation of uh, software and data that are published at open uh, has been discussed uh, and so this is a very uh, frontline uh, topic obviously and open science uh, pull all together this aspect of the uh, research uh, nowadays so what i would like to know is, is is if uh, do you have some relationship with the elixir community because there for example there are many people that uh, are expert in for example for uh, data management data management plan for uh, that now they are mandatory obviously even in if you want to make a proposal for a project the management plan is now something that is mandatory so many people are uh, developing also tool for uh, to support scientists to design a data management plan in a way that then results of the research can be reproducible uh, can be shareable can be findable and uh, usable from uh, from other research this yeah. is really my 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 con my question in this moment and then if i can i i for sure i would like to to participate to this program or at least uh, also for sharing uh, uh, and uh, for dissemination of this program so that many other people can join 
because I think it is uh, really important. Thank you, Domenica. Um, I will start and I think you can also add a bit and just because Emma mentioned that she wasn't very sure about life science. So let me tell you, Emma, it's totally okay not to have life science. But Domenica, everything that you said is totally true. Like, so, so the first of, first of all, the Elixir connection is that I was the, the, one of the training coordinators when I was working in Germany for the uh, Elixir German node. And one of our co-founders is still a co-deputy coordinator of that. So she is actually working closely with them. Yo is part of the Elixir node in the UK. And there, there are a lot of people we work closely with, like Fotis and Matthews, and there are many members who are our mentors and experts. And there were a couple of uh, Elixir projects who were also part of our first cohort. And we totally recognize that everything that we teach in open science is very transferable across different fields, not just within bioinformatics, but within any, any research community we can talk about. Mm -hmm. Everything that you said, Dominica, is like things that we want to teach. So it's really amazing that you know everything and you're still here and you believe what we are doing and you want to spread about it. So thank you so much for that. Um, so what... First of all, that we can't actually include all the aspects within the same project. People have to define their project and they have to define what they are trying to achieve. It's possible that they are trying to achieve development and dissemination at the same time, or they are trying to achieve development and ontology or verification of data at the same time. So we need to have an open mind that our project may not have all these 10, 15 principle directly applicable, and there might be one or two aspects that, that we want to achieve in four months because the program is four months. But it doesn't mean that, that it cannot advance. Uh, uh, so we want to just really make people think about a project that they know they can get started with in a short period of time and once they feel comfortable with the practices that we are teaching, they can advance their project in the right direction. So Elixir and FAIR com community in general is a target audience for us, but anybody who has an idea from any other research field are equally suitable for it. Yo, would you want to join something in? Yeah, well, I think Movika, you gave a really thorough answer. Um, I would just perhaps maybe wrap up or recap that we have a lot of informal relationships with Alexa. So like I mean, Movika mentioned, she, she was a training coordinator of Onis, um, one of our co-founder is, and I work for um, an, an Alexa node, at least for the next few weeks. Um, but I think that we, oh yeah, and the fact that we have many mentors, mentees and experts from the Alexa community. And actually a lot of our original content was developed at the Alexa Biohackathon last year, which was really good fun because we actually had the chance to pull in experts from uh, the same room at the same time. Um, but I think also perhaps potentially longer term, we would love to have um, a more formal relationship with Alexa as well. So that's something we might think about. Emma, stop me if I'm putting you on the spot, but do you, would you like to ask a question after <laughs> having this really intense discussion on bioinformatics? I, I'm just, I was really interested because I'm actually just coming back into academia. I've had quite a long break. Um, I've had a family and um, so I'm, I'm at the moment, I'm applying for postdoctoral funding um, and obviously it's taking quite a long time and I've been working as a freelance uh, I'm a paleoecologist um, but that work has kind of gone by the wayside because I can't access a laboratory <laughs> so um, I've been doing lots of online courses in open science because I, I really want to base my new project in open with, within open science because really in paleoecology and archaeological science it isn't really a thing and people are very uh, negative about it is what I've been finding um, and I when I did my PhD a long time ago I did a reproducible study um, because I felt a method in my field was not really good enough and I've actually had trouble publishing that and I did it now 10 years ago <laughs> because it shows negative results and people in my field are not aware that actually we need open science to be a lot more transparent 
and uh, so I've been talking, I've been doing over this time, I've been doing some research about open open data in my field and I've made a massive database which is what I've been working on in this lockdown and I'm just starting to write a paper about it but what I really want to do and this is this is something that's just come very good time for me um, is I want to turn that into a community push to really raise awareness of actually there's this massive problem that actually we need to address and only there's only very few people who are really starting to talk about it and really think that it's something that needs to be addressed so this for me would be really ideal because i i haven't really got any mentors in my own field i'm kind of on my own and uh i kind of need that sort of push myself i think to then hopefully get funding to lead a project which can really be based in um around open science practices and really sort of go for the whole well, I really want to do a lot of reproducible studies in my field and uh, to develop very uh, robust methodologies but I can't do that unless I get other people's data unfortunately <laughs> and at the moment it's not out there and when you ask for it people are, are like well I put my data in my paper but they've put averages and ranges there's no raw data out there and so um, I just feel like the community sort of push that this project would enable me to do would be perfect because I think it's that raising awareness that hopefully will help me. <laughs> um, so I don't know. So I, I'm really hoping that you have a mentors because my field is very behind. Uh, I feel generally. I, I, would say probably I am a life scientist or they everything I study is dead which is probably why I wouldn't say that <laughs> but um, I am a botanist essentially um because uh, I study modern plants and things like that but they're all dead and most of them thousands of years old um but um I'm hoping there's some mentor out there for me who has had to tackle this before and can give me lots of tips of how to approach people who are not not very into open science practices and can sort of push me in the right direction i suppose um i suppose that's two I've got things to ask. <laughs> no that, that's a great question that really mm. highlights a couple of things that we are doing we didn't cover mm. yet first of all that a lot of people feel isolation in open science if they're the only people in their field talking about it right and what they need is to connect with other positive people who have positive interaction and positive knowledge about okay. open science right <laughs> so you have to have that mm. that support system else you would feel isolated and unsupported and that's not very productive so that you will definitely have other is that even though your mentor doesn't really come from the field that you are from they come from an understanding of how struggling it could be to be the first person to establish mm yourself as an open scientist in your field and we have several of those people but not just that like our mentors are often told don't believe that you need to give solution to your mentees you're you're supposed to be there and support them mm -hmm. and the the places where you feel that your expertise is not enough you reach out to our expert uh, pool and these expert pool are different from mentor pool these expert pools are experts who are extremely busy to be able to give one-on-one -on -one mentorship to everybody on a on a you know four months of commitment, but they are there to be reached out to uh, for one or two calls so they can give uh, more specialized uh, consulting and guidance on the project. So in your case, for example, if we have a mentor who actually helps you establish a community and be strong uh, with your voice that you have already established there could be an expert who are probably not at the moment part of our program but we can reach out to them uh, for from who can actually help you with archaeology i'm i'm not aware mm -hmm. but there are, i can be very <laughs> hopeful that there are other people who feel as isolated as you but they are in the mm -hmm. same, same field as you yeah so, so they might have expertise that you can benefit from but of course there is a platform where you need to invite them and that would be that would be definitely something that we can yeah we can i mean unfortunately the lockdown there was meant to be an open science um practices uh, conference um in oxford university um just when the lockdown happened i think it was a couple of weeks into it and i was meant to be giving a paper there 
about reproducibility and how we need it. Um, and there is there is things out there, but it's mostly about open access publishing, a bit about data. I've, I mean, the FAIR principles, I've heard someone talk about those at a conference recently, but the whole approach being embedded is what I think really needs to be put in place. And that's that's sort of what I want to sort of go for, go for the go big or go home kind of thing, isn't it? <laughs> so um, and it's that kind of awareness that I kind of want to get out there because um, there's so much, unfortunately, so much bad science going on. And I, I just think it's a, from a complete lack of transparency at the moment. So, yeah. Stephen, you had a question about mentor. Would you like to ask something else? No pressure. That's totally fine. I think Yo has put together two questions for us to have like a little bit more discussion on. Um, and if we want, we can have we can start with like a silent Google docking. This is uh, this is for us to take a breather and write it on our own. So if you haven't opened the shared document, I highly encourage you to open it. And if you scroll down, you will see two, two questions. One is things to encourage. What do you like about this program that if at all, if you would go on and join us you would like to see and then second is things to improve what would you like to see differently than what we have already told you so let's take a few minutes to write that down each of us um, and we'll come back to it yeah, this is uh, one thing about open life science calls we are not afraid of silent collaborative working <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna mute everyone because there's a bit of uh, typing in the background.
think I've just seen my favourite uh, improvement suggestion, which is more sub more publicity. So thank you so much, whoever's writing that one as an improvement. <laughs> um, so actually, this is really useful. I can see a comment about wanting to know what the who the mentors are. So I'm just going to really quickly get the Open Life Science site up and share my screen before we wrap up and share okay can you see the site i've got thumbs up brilliant okay um so just give you a tiny tiny tour um so on openlifesite.org if you hop over to the navigation bar uh, we have our mentors and experts so these are people who uh potentially may be mentors for um open life science and we have little bios for each of the people. Um, so we do have people from all around the world. So I think our pool includes people from Greece, from the United States, from Canada, and from a large number of different domains, um, Brazil as well, and South Africa. So we have a really varied pool. So I think in some cases we have even managed to language match people rather than, and sometimes it's domain specific matching. Um, so one of our projects actually in OLS1 was uh, completely in Portuguese and I was really, really excited when they taught us about the program and I was almost a little bit sad for myself because it wasn't in a language I could read because the project sounded so awesome, but we can, we can provide for international people as well. Um, so you can have a browse through the bios. Uh, sometimes during the application period, we may pull in other people who aren't listed on the site if we think that there is someone necessary for a specific skill match as well. So it may get may end up larger than this. And I think we haven't at this point added anyone from OLS one from the previous cohort. So you can actually see also here uh, projects and participants, and you can get a good idea of the projects that have been participating. Um, one thing also to note there is that it can give you a good idea of some of the projects that are suitable. Uh, so the, these have just brief paragraph about every single uh, person who's applied and who's participated. And you can see the sorts of things that they've been working on. If you're not sure, then you can always ping us. Or, I mean, ask us now. Or you can also ask us privately. So team at openlifesci.org. And we're very happy to answer questions or even um yeah, deal with any uncertainties. One thing actually I'd like to highlight on the OLS one part of the site is that whilst a lot of people applied for this on their own, we also had quite a few teams as well. And either is acceptable. So as if, if you're on your own, that's absolutely fine. Um, but if you have a team, then you can sometimes encourage your team members to join as well. And that does help to split the work potentially. Um, but it, it really does vary. I think our biggest team had four or five people here. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. Ah, yes, there's another thing I did want to briefly show. So we have a syllabus, which you can browse under OLS2, and it gives you a full timeline of everything that we will be covering. So if you hop over here, let's say to the Welcome to Open Life Science call, then we actually already have our notes available online. So you can get a really good idea of what any given lesson we'll be teaching. Did that link work? Okay, maybe that's a dud link. <laughs> anyway, this will uh, work for OLS one year for OLS two yes. year. Still li li linking. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me try that again. So if I go to the schedule and I click on Welcome to Open Life Science and Notes. Yeah. So you can see the recordings as well. Um, they'll be different every cohort because we'll have different guest speakers and because we'll have different participants raising different issues. But you can actually see everything that went on. Uh, throughout the call and we designed the documents to be really collaborative so we have this silent google docking like we just had earlier we have guest speakers and we sort of encourage people to plus one and to comment on each other's work as we're going so you'll see these are real living exciting documents um, are there any other aspects i should demo malvika can't really tell uh, just want to give a shout out to berenice who is not here and has put a lot of energy in in making it like super accessible website. Um, and we just love working with each other, which is also very good. Like I really love, love working with you and Bernice because we share this very, very, very strong value about what we believe in. And that just is very nice. And also like all the mentors and experts in the program are our friends because we invited them personally to become part of OLS1 because we trust that that the value that we want to spread are shared 
So we really emphasize on the authenticity of the program. We are non-commercial, not-for-profit work. So there is nothing that we are actually making out of this, uh, but just the pleasure of uh, working with people like you who really want to become part of this uh, important sharing movement. Okay, um, I will just bounce the thank you very much back at Malvika. Um, I have an amazing team. Um, but also thank you very much to everyone who has come and listened in and we hope that you're excited enough to apply and slash or spread the word. Thank you very much to you and uh, it has been really a pleasure. Uh, to attend this meeting, I will I will go to look better in the site and into the program that maybe I would like also to join. I see there are many people that I know and have among the mentors, and so I can also ask them about the day because you know uh, it is important to understand very well what uh, what it is expected by you. That and if you can provide really uh, real support, but if if you um, if you like, uh, I can uh, I can uh, if you need still, I can spread uh, the 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 program among uh, other network and the people that uh, could be interested to. To participate uh, as a trainee or as trainer, mentor, and if you like, I can do that. I will do for sure. And uh, I understand there is another meeting at the end, no, uh, of June. That should be another uh, uh, meeting like this one, another event like this one. Okay, so I can I can tell people that if they still want, because I also to my institute I send the email that Malvika sent this morning to the member the colleague in my institute, but it was really short news, so short time for uh, for uh, people to be ready to to attend, but. Uh, uh, if, it, if we are still in time, I can uh, support you in spreading as much as possible uh, the program and so maybe there, there could be people that uh, will uh, join next time. And to That would be awesome, Domenica. Uh, we will put the video up on the YouTube as well and we'll link it on the note that we are working on today. So if you think that someone would have loved to attend but they did not, you can share the notes with them and they can watch the video as well. Yes, absolutely. Now I, I put uh, my email here, whatever. Okay, you have also the goblet uh, uh, executive board uh, yeah. email, so you can communicate to all, but if you have something that you would like uh, me to help you in um, uh, noticing people uh, to this uh, presentation, YouTube uh, presentation, video and so on, whatever. Thank Do not you so hesitate much. to ask me. <laughs> Very delighted. Mm -hmm. So we can probably stop recording you. And I think it's Friday and everybody deserves a 10 minutes shorter meetings because they always make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> so take a break, enjoy your weekend. 